You're right. Also, um, I wanted to make a video on um, Alexandros' uh, capture pain relief uh, trade setup, and it's actually quite interesting. Um, I did the, as I was going through the analysis and doing it on my chart. I uh, thought that there was it was worth pointing out. That there's actually another level, and uh, you can get CPRs typically. You know, you typically get them at highs and lows, but you can also get multiple levels of CPRs where traders are going to be caught in. Um, in more at more than one level so I just wanted to um, highlight that and in fact let me just get my pen tool out right and so what you have is uh, a level here and when you're when you're extending levels back and what I can see Alexandros has done is like there's a you know he's basically there's multiple touches of this area right here but if you extend the level back like this then you know, it adds a lot of confluence because if you have, you know, uh, a level that's resistance turned support, that adds, um, again, uh, confluence to traders that that level's been touched in the past and that it should want to go to the upside. But then you get, you know, the move to the downside, which takes out all the liquidity below. But what it does is it draws in your short traders before, um, you know, they get caught on the wrong side of the market. So then you get retracement traders getting caught going short there, and then prices eventually end up going to the upside. So that's the capture as breakout traders think that prices are going sh uh, lower than the pain and then the relief, right? And the relief is based off of <coughs> uh, the supply and demand equation in terms of if everyone went, you know, if breakout traders and retracement traders went short here, it means they have to buy to exit, right? So went short here, it means they have to exit their trade, they have to buy. And that is basically demand, buy uh, orders of demand. And so it adds to the to the uh, demand equation at that level, yeah? So if you have, um, like I said, you've got, you've got those traders who were caught in their positions, the pain and the relief, and then you have also other traders who would have looked at this area of support and resistance. That was resistance turned support. Then that should be turned some sort of you know support in the future, right? They add buying because they're just looking at the trading that level, right? So new traders come in, and then you've got traders who went uh, short at this area of resistance. Yeah, resistance, 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 and they're going to take profit. You know, at areas where they think prices are likely to reverse prices is reversed here and so um, uh, you know when they when they're taking profit if they shorted here then you know they're to exit their trade and to take profit is also going to be more buying so it's more demand so lots of buying from a um, a uh, technical analysis perspective but ultimately uh, the fundamentals is really what we're you know we need to marry the technicals with the fundamentals and un understanding that if the market doesn't think that the euro is a buy here or a bargain price at this area, then unfortunately there's just no setup, no technical setup in the world that's going to, you know, um, work in terms of, you know, you might be able to, you know, maybe play some sort of pending order here and might be able to get in and get out on a move to the upside. You know, and then it eventually rolls over. Who knows? Um, but what will end up happening is, is that the the majority of that that demand will end up being swallowed up by supply. You know, driven by the fundamentals, which basically, you know, the market thinks that the dollar is an absolute bargain still at this price. Yeah, then there's going to just be more supply from a fundamental perspective that will swallow up and the imbalance of supply and demand will continue going to the downside at this moment nobody knows but you know if if we're trading we need to um understand yes technically and fundamentally uh why you want to get you know long um or short at a level and marry the two for the best uh trade setups of course now obviously um uh I can understand why uh, Alexandros is long, and many traders are um, long euros against uh, against dollars. And um, nothing wrong with that, of course. Uh, I did take a, a trade from up here, as you guys you know know. And uh, at the moment, it's uh, it's a profitable trade at the moment. So I'm I'm I've basically um, I'm at break even with an open position to the short side, in anticipation of in fact uh, some dollar strength. So. 
I'm like I said, I've got in and around here these areas here, and uh, at the moment, um, it looks profitable for for me. So, uh, in fact, Alexandros is uh, trading against me potentially. Anyways, it happens, right? It happens, especially against the euro dollar. You can make an argument. I totally get the argument um, and the analysis for going long euros, right? But I understand the analysis for going short euros. And when you get a situation like that, anyways, um, we can both be right or we can both be wrong. We can both be right in a sense that you know uh, the market is is going to be you know confused in terms of you know a direction and what tends to happen is you get auctions like this you get ranging prices so someone can be you know like myself can get short here make some money someone can get long here make some money right um so again um that is what it is but what i also wanted to talk about was actually the multiple levels of of um of the cpr right so as i was drawing out alexandros's level on this um um, one of the things that you want to you want to keep an eye on is the time of day that the capture actually happens as well because when you look at the um the amount of volume that comes in right you know for example that's during the uh, london session you know seven o'clock seven thirty eight where a lot of day traders are going to get involved in that to the short side right so they're looking at this point in time at going short yeah at this level yeah so this was the level we looked at before now we're moved up to this level so you know you've got level there level there very accurate then it bounces off of that level to the downside right and in fact i'll use um i'll use this tool yeah and so you can see when prices they're not only traders caught going short here yeah and obviously you know these traders these breakout traders but you also get traders going short um here at this level so you've got there that move to the downside indicates that there are traders bounce you know going short off of that level right and so if you go down to maybe something like the 15 minute that looks like a nice engulfing candle yeah so imagine this is all you saw yeah oh sorry this is all you saw right a lot of traders are going to go short here yeah it's just a no-brainer they're going to they're gonna go short here. So then they end up also getting caught on the wrong side of the market as prices go against them. Yeah, that is a brilliant CPR. So now when prices actually come back down to the level, yeah, you can see that not only do we have these low these guys at the lower end, you know, these traders at the lower end of the uh, level, uh, looking to get involved uh, or get out of their trade because obviously you know if they hasn't haven't been stopped out loss aversion bias etc um, then again these guys will want to get out of their trade around here alongside these ones right so these traders down here all these traders who have been caught to different degrees after the pain side of things are now looking to get out right and you can see in fact it bounced off of the level um, and price, you know, there's been more demand at that level when price moved, what, maybe, nah, I don't know, about 10 pips or so. But, um, but yeah, that was, you know, a bit of the relief that comes into the market, demand that comes into the market. Now, how this trade plays out is totally dependent upon what happens tomorrow with regards to, um, you know, CPI, and uh, the US CPI and obviously whether it's a hawkish hold or a hike and whether the uh, Europe also as well decide on Thursday um, whether they are going to continue hiking um, at July's meeting or if they are not. So there are traders, you know, uh, right now who are positioning themselves. Yeah, these guys have been relieved, um, but ultimately, um, you know, the fundamentals are, uh, are going to always uh, um, decide um, and and I guess you know push prices either to the upside or continue in fact you know to the downside um, as there's no technical level that's really going to stand in the way of of whether you know the institutions want to be buyers or sellers at this area so we're just trying to match um, you know our fundamental bias um, and the way that we trade technically with the fundamentals so yeah so that's that but the technical setup i do i really did like it that's really nice didn't see it because i wasn't um looking actually at um any long euro trades but 
as you as uh, Alexandre just did point it out here when I saw it I was like oh yeah 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 I can see it now then I saw that other level up top so yeah it's all good this would be your opportunity to get involved you know in the trade look at look for an entry whether it's the 15 minute whether it's a five minute whether it's a half an hour or an hourly time frame chart just make sure you've got enough upside potential and um, you think that prices are obviously you know going to go maybe break beyond that zone but again, that's going to be a catalyst driven by what happens over the next uh, day or so, the next 24 hours, pretty much. All right, guys. Um, yeah, thank you for posting that chart. Really good chart and uh, uh, great analysis, Alexandros. Uh, take care, guys. Speak to you all soon.